Hello, everyone. All right, let's take notes on speciation. Uh, grab your handout, pencil. We're good to go. All right, so definition time, uh, vocab term. So speciation is the process of making new species where usually one species uh, separates, evolves into two distinct species that can no longer um, interbreed with one another. Remember the definition of a species, um, members of a population that can interbreed to produce fertile offspring. All right, that was our definition of species way back, uh, gosh, a really long time ago when we first started talking about ecology in the beginning of the, of the class. So a species are uh, members that can interbreed and produce offspring. Once a speciation event has occurred, you end up with two or more new species that can no longer interbreed, that's how you can tell they're new and distinct species, all right? And one thing that I want to point out here, and I think I've mentioned before, but we get this question every once in a while, people ask, well, if this bird is undergoing evolution and is going to evolve into two species, does this old species no longer exist and you have two brand new ones? Or, or does this species still exist and you have another single new species? Um, both can be true, but more typical is that um, the, this species of bird will have some kind of evolutionary pressure on it, on some subset of its population, and so um, one part or component of the, this overall population will change into a new species, evolve, and the um, other part of the population will remain as the original species. So typically what happens is you have one species that kind of shoots off an, a, a uh, a new branch to create a new species and the old species. And the old one still exists. All right. Okay, so there's that. So let's look at some causes of speciation. What makes this happen? Why does this happen? Uh, the first one we want to talk about is something called geographic isolation. So ge geographic, that's, you know, geological, having to do with, you know, earth and geological formations, rocks, mountains, that kind of thing. So the pictures here are supposed to get us to think about that. So um, isolation means separation. The, the basis for what has to happen in a speciation event to cause speciation, uh, you have to separate one part of the population from the rest of the population somehow. One way to do that is by geography. So, for example, let's say you can see an island in the distance here, right? And there's an island right here. Maybe in the past, these two were connected by a land bridge and then for some reason, the, the level of this water rose up and separated these two, uh, uh, these, this into two separate islands, uh, but it used to be one big island. So that's a type of geographic isolation. Any, if you had a species of animals that was living on this original large piece of land that could move from this side to that side easily, but then the water rose and separated these two pieces, now the organism can't easily get from this side to that side. You have now separated the organisms on these two islands and they are isolated from one another. That's an example of geographic isolation. So you can do that with changing water levels or lava flows or forest fires or uh, melting uh, ice sheets or lakes that rise all right so some kind of uh, uh, one one of the causes of possible causes of speciation is some kind of change in the geography that separates a population uh, into two parts and once those two populations uh, can no longer intermingle that means they can't interbreed and eventually they're going to by genetic drift they're going to they're going to evolve into different species so one cause for speciation is geographic isolation Another cause, uh, possible cause of um, speciation is reproductive isolation. So that means um, using a reproductive strat, changing uh, the reproductive strategies that organisms use. All right, so look at these two birds. They look kind of alike. I mean, this guy's kind of chubby and this guy's kind of skinny, but they're both, um, they look pretty similar. They are actually both species of meadowlarks, but um, they look alike, but they're different species. Um, they don't interbreed. They can't. They use different um, mate finding strategies. Uh, this could be something like a different song. You know, birds will attract a mate with bird with calls or songs, or mating dances and things like that. 
Um, these two uh, types of birds have different mating strategies, and that means they're reproductively isolated. Um, uh, they can't, they don't interbreed, and so they are two different species. They don't interbreed because they have different, they're, they're basically looking for different things in a mate, all right? Different dances or different bird calls or whatever. So that's what, um, that's one example of reproductive isolation. Um, but you can't let appearances fool you. Um, sometimes organisms can look really different and actually be the same species, like these two ants. So these are both ants of the same species. They're really, you know, they, they could even be members of the same family from the same queen, but they're really different from one another because, for ants at least, they fulfill different roles in their colony, and so they uh, appear very different. They need different body structures, and so they look different from one another, but they're the same species. All right, so that was the second type of uh, strategy was uh, reproductive isolation. The third way to cause a speciation event that we're going to talk about is called a change in chromosome number. So we talked about this a little bit before. Um, we talked about this idea uh, back uh, when we were learning about meiosis. We talked about polyploidy. That can occur when um, you have something called non-disjunction happen during meiosis. That means non-disjunction means a failure for, of chromosomes to separate properly. Do you remember this from, from our meiosis conversation? So um, sometimes uh, you can have a non-disjunction event happen and that resulting uh, gamete can still be fertilized. And if that happens, you'll have a species, uh, or rather an organism occur with a different number of chromosomes in it. And um, that can be a different species. So here's a little diagram of what, uh, what non-disjunction looks like. Um, polyploidy means having multiple sets of chromosomes. Um, and plants can tolerate multiple sets of chromosomes, but animals cannot. So a change in chromosome number like that can happen um, from a non-disjunction event can only happen in plants. This can't happen in animals. Um, but it is possible for a change in chromosome number to generate a new species. And this can happen in plants. All right, so how long does this kind of thing take? How long does it take to get a new species? Well, um, in plants, like we just said, it's possible that the speciation can take a uh, place in a single generation. Because if it's based on a change in chromosome number, that only takes one generation to happen. Um, and obviously, this only applies to plants because only plants can uh, endure or uh, yeah, tolerate polyploidy, multiple copies of chromosomes. So one, uh, one um, description of a possible rate of speciation would be a single generation in a very particular case. But more generally, and applying to animals and plants as well, there are a couple of ideas. One of these ideas is called gradualism. And this is the, the idea that uh, um, species evolve slowly, gradually, steadily, uh, over long changes, uh, long periods of time, um, by way of small, uh, uh, um, small adaptive changes that accumulate. All right, so gradualism, gradually, the uh, species will change and, and evolve slowly and steadily. And you can contrast that with the idea of what's called punctuated equilibrium, which means that um, speciation events happen really quickly, uh, maybe in a, you know. 100 years over in, uh, uh, instead of, you know, a thousand years. Um, so, but, so speciation events occur quickly, rapid bursts with long periods of, of genetic equilibrium. Do you remember the term genetic equilibrium from back when we were, uh, let me see, that was about two units ago when we were talking about um, genetic, no, not that far. Anyway, this means um, no uh, evolution, no changes in allele frequency. That's what genetic equilibrium means. So, Punctuated equilibrium says that there will be uh, long periods uh, for a species where there seems to be nothing happening, no uh, allele frequencies are changing, and then some um, some environmental change occurs that um, means the the population has to evolve or change quickly, um, and so you'll see a burst of changes, a burst of changes in allele frequency, a burst of um, evolution, and then a stable period, and then another burst of evolution when environment changes again, and then another flat period, stable period. Um, the kinds of things that can trigger this are rises in temperatures or introducing a competitive species, um, or even reproductive isolation, 
um, these causes uh, sort of come on quickly and change the environmental pressures on a species quickly. And so you see a big spike in the kind of evolution rate. Now both, uh, the, the sorry, the evidence that we have supports both punctuated equilibrium and gradualism. So basically both of these things occur at the same time. Both are true. You'll see punctuated equilibrium examples in the fossil record, and you also see gradualism examples in the fossil record. So there's not a right answer. They're both true. All right. So lastly, let's talk about patterns of evolution. What what is pat what how does uh, evolution look, um, and then how why might those be different? Okay. So we have uh, a couple. The first um, is something called divergent evolution, and this is the probably what you think of most commonly when you talk about evolution, where species that are similar or organisms that are similar kind of gradually grow further and further apart. They become more and more different over time. So that's called divergent evolution. That's one type of evolution pattern that you see. Whoops, wrong way. Um, a second type of uh, evolution pattern that you occasionally see is something called adaptive radiation. Um, that's when one species evolves into a whole bunch of different species basically at the same time. Um, and this is probably what happened with Darwin's finches in the Galapagos Islands. So um, before the um, ocean level, sea level changed and the Galap when, when the Galapagos Islands were still connected to each other and to the mainland, um, there was one species of finch that had access to all that area. But then the sea level changed, the Galapagos became islands cut off from each other, and the competitive pressures and the food availability of different food supplies on those now newly formed islands meant that that original finch species evolved adaptively radiation, sorry, adaptively radiated or evolved quickly into a bunch of different species all at once. And so um, the Galapagos Island finches are probably an example of adaptive radiation where you start off with one species and it changes really quickly into a whole bunch of species. The third uh, pattern is called convergent evolution, and that's when um, sort of the opposite of divergent, convergent, coming together. So convergent evolution, that's where species that, you're, that are not related to each other end up looking alike or having the same basic phenotype. And that occurs um, when species uh, find themselves in environments that are basically the same in different parts of the world. So for example, in this picture, we have uh, two deserts. Here's a desert of, uh, in Southern California. Here's a desert in Australia. Um, deserts are hot and dry, and the soil is kind of crummy. And um, if you look at the kinds of plants that you find in these two uh, very distant um, uh, land masses, you see cactuses that kind of look the same. They have this kind of barrel shape, and they've got spines. Um, so uh, these two completely unrelated species have evolved to basically have the same general phenotype because of the environments where they find themselves. So similar environmental pressures, similar natural selection pressures will pretty much end up with the same solution. This is, this is an ideal solution for surviving in a hot, dry, uh, sandy soil environment um, if you're a plant and that's what you look like. So that's what convergent evolution means, different species uh, that aren't related end up looking alike. So that pretty much wraps up our discussion of speciation. Um, hopefully uh, you got all that down and um, enjoy this cartoon from Gary Larson back a very long time ago um, for, entitled Great Moments in Evolution. And I'll let you ponder that and we'll talk with you soon.